Kid, seriously. Hey out there, this is the Kid Seriously Show without a giant long pre-written intro. I am Luke Neitzel, joined by Mark Neitzel, and uh, we are missing one Maya Madrid who is stuck in bed sick with what can only be described as Aquaman fever because he is so excited for Jason Momoa without his shirt on that he is unable to be here today. So we are just going to struggle on as best we can without him and see what we can come up with. But, uh, Mark, how are you doing out there in Portland? I'm cold, I'm wet, and as we're going to be getting into later in the show, I am in a deep, deep funk along with all of my fellow Portlandians over what transpired last night. Now, when you say cold, how cold is it in Portland? Uh, it, when I woke up, it was 37 degrees. Okay. So, I mean, it's, I, I guess, I know it's not... Midwest cold, it's you're going through worse, yada yada yada. But for 15 years, I've been living in California where it never got below 45, and they, even then, 45 was like once a year occurrence. So to consistently be in the low 30s with no sun and constantly drizzling, it's a pretty brutal adjustment here for me. I wasn't even trying to be snarky about it. I, I honestly don't know what cold is for out there because I've I've only been to the Pacific Northwest once and it was in September. So it wasn't too bad. Yeah, we're, we're colder here. This was one of the first days where it felt I felt just miserably cold and I had to be outside for extended periods of time. And it's I think the high today was like 33, but it was just windy and it's dark. And it just cuts right through you when that wind blows. So this is one of those days that happens. I, normally, I, I do like the winter and I do like the cold, but there's just some days where you're like, why the fuck do I live here? This is horrible. And that was today. So, yay. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, at least the weather's matched the, the mood of the town. Um, so we've got that going for us. But, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing adjustment. And uh, I know that I need to buy some warmer coats. And I need to buy some thicker gloves, and that's going to be my project for this week. Nice. Well, we should probably move on to talk a little bit about trailers, but at least know it's probably really sunny and warm in Atlanta right now. So we uh, we saw a couple new trailers that came out this week, too. Massive trailers, both Marvel movies. Where do you want to start? Uh, well, let's go uh, chronologically. Let's start with Captain Marvel. Okay, what did you, th- what did you think about this? Okay, so... I've been thinking about this, and um, I'm, I'm going to want to get. I want well, dying to get your opinion on this too. Um, but before I give my opinion, I, I want to put out a couple qualifiers here. Okay, number one, I have been excited for this movie for as long as it's been announced. So they could have put a black screen up there for two minutes. They could have put clips of. Um, Mac and me or freaking killer clowns from outer space. And I wouldn't matter. All right. I would be going to this movie anyway. That's qualifier. Number one, qualifier. Number two, Brie Larson is an amazing actress. Probably I, I will go as far as say one of the best we've got working right now. She can act the shit out of anything she wants. So I have complete confidence in her ability to do this role. Okay. I want to make both of those things very clear. Because I have found both trailers and this one incredibly underwhelming. And I have also thought that the the choices they've made have not done a good job of selling her in this role. So first off, it, and this gets really close to some misogynist crap that happened online before. When the first trailer came out, you know, there was the whole big, oh, why isn't she smiling? And nonsense from a lot of um, the, the misogynistic elements out on you know Twitter and on the internet, and you know, and obviously that is just kind of a it plays into a common trope that men use to be obnoxious to women. Oh, you should smile more. And, and so I didn't want to fall into that. But when you look at the shots they choose of her face in both trailers. She always has the same sort of static facial expression. Okay. Now I, 
I like I said, I believe she's a great actress. I'm sure she goes through a ton of range in this movie, and I'm I'm not concerned about it. But I have noticed that it seems to me every single shot shows the exact same kind of expressionless face. Um, and, you know, I noticed that and, and that that it sort of affected how I watched this trailer. Um, I've also thought, too, a lot of her audio is clearly voiceover, right? You're not seeing her speaking the lines as she's delivering them. And so it's very likely that they might be using some earlier audio mixes, that they might be using some takes that aren't exactly, you know, the line she's going to be delivering in the final product. So I understand that too. And that's why I'm not worried about it. But some of those line readings seem to come off to me as fairly flat. Um, I think especially the end of the second trailer where she says, I'm not here to fight your war. I'm here to end it. That particular line reading to me came off just as lacking any kind of emotion, lacking any kind of gravity behind it. And, and that, that to me is sort of the, the, the first thing that when I watched this, it really jumped out at me. And I don't, I really don't want to come off as, you know, somebody who's being down on this because it's a female lead and because no, no. she's being all bubbly and, and, and shit like that. You know, I, I, I'm really sensitive to the fact that, there's a lot of unwarranted criticism out there, but I still, I had this experience watching it and, and that was kind of the first impression I had. So what about you? I don't know if you have a response to that or. I, I, I do, but I'm going to share what my first reaction to seeing this trailer was. This is obviously the second trailer you touched upon how she's not smiling was brought up with the first trailer. The other thing that was brought up with the first trailer was people being confused that she was punching out an old woman especially people mm. who probably aren't very knowledgeable in Marvel lore to know what was going on. Cause I think any, anyone else who knew who the villains were knew exactly what was happening in that sequence. But I thought right. this trailer was, was reactionary in the mm. fact that the opening scene is telling us that that old woman is a scrawl immediately. And then it ends with the closest attempt we have to a joke and her smiling in the car with Sam Jackson that we get. So I was kind of sh surprised at first that, that opening, the opening 30 seconds of this trailer seemed to me to be a direct response to criticism of the early trailer, which are both things I really didn't think need to be addressed. Because yeah, I'm in the same boat as you. I don't, I don't give a fuck if she smiles or not. Um, and I know what a scroll is, so I wasn't worried that Captain Marvel was really trying to murder old women. <laughs> I, I'm not as worried about the kind of the the kind of monotoniness of what she's doing, the blank facial expressions, because I have a feeling that's going to play into the plot of this, because mm -hmm. this is going to be an origin story where she thinks she's a Kree soldier and finds out she's human. So probably part of that is a conditioning to make her slightly more robotic, monotoned, more of a the good sold Kree soldier. And as time the movie progresses, I imagine we're going to get some emotional swells and she's going to bust out of that. So that that doesn't bother me to the same way as it did you, because I think it's fine. And like you said, we don't know what kind of voiceover it is. And and the line at the end, too, we don't know if that is the actual line, because a lot of times they take right. segments of a longer line and cut them down because they sound better than the trailer. Um, so right. I, I think it's going to be OK. The worries for me is that. The CGI at the end looks really bad, which I was kind of surprised because I spend a lot of the trailer being so impressed with the de-aging on Sam Jackson. I mean, that blows yeah. me away at how good he looks. And then when you see Captain Marvel flying through space, you know, fighting these people, it looked a little, a little old PlayStation-y. Than, than I would expect from them, which was kind of disappointing. I think overall this movie, to me, I'm, I'm not a huge Captain Marvel fan. I don't know a ton about her. I don't dislike her, but I am excited that they're going back to space. I'm excited that they're giving a female character a chance for once. But this movie, to me, just looks kind of like another origin story movie. Yeah. I, I, I thought of, about thinking about Doctor Strange a lot while I was watching this, who's another character that I don't didn't know a ton about and I don't dislike or really, really care about either way, that this movie felt a lot like this. Like, I'm probably going to go have a good time, but for, forget about it and just wait for it to fold into the larger story, which it's obviously going to do a few months later. So... I'm hoping I'm wrong because I would love this movie to wow and be a big, big deal. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, the the trailers so far haven't shown me anything other than, hey, it's another Marvel movie. It's going through the same beats we've seen in all the other ones. Yeah, yeah, no, and and what you're saying too, uh, back to the beginning about the the you know condition, and maybe she's a warrior, and that's why she's supposed to be giving that. That is something I had anticipated too, and and that's why I like I said before, I'm not worried about the actual movie. Yeah, I'm not worried about her in the role. I'm sure she's going to kill it. I'm willing to bet um, heavily that she's going to do a fantastic job on it. But just as far as it being a trailer, yeah, I feel like they've made odd choices in selling it to people who may not have that level of enthusiasm, who may not be as sold on it. Yeah. Um, and and I, while I completely agree with your reactionary bit about how yeah you know i thought about that too oh well we've got to know that the old lady is actually a bad guy and the jokes at the end it's still to me to then not change the you know the elements of her performance that they presented in the original one that still seemed odd like okay you're, you're still kind of doubling down on that as far as the the trailer goes yeah, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a great trailer. I thought the CGI at the end was just kind of muddled. I had a little trouble, and I've had this before with a lot of movies, and especially we talked about it with the, the Harry Potter one. Maybe it's just my eyes are going bad. I don't know, but I had trouble exactly tracking what's going on. It becomes kind of blurry and sort of an overdone mess, and too many things happening, and too many other details that there just wasn't a clarity. You know, it's I could tell what was going on, but it wasn't easy to tell what was going on. So, yeah, I was a little worried about that, too. And to me, the, the biggest disappointment wasn't there's too much going on for bad CGI, but I, I think that's valid. It's when then she flies up and it's a close up of her in space. It just looked poorly rendered. Like she didn't look like a real person. She didn't look, you know, she looked like a, a video game cutscene, which was for the again for the amount of work they did on Samuel L Jackson and for where we've seen some of these other fully CGI characters I was kind of kind of amazed that it looked so poor. I wonder as far as the marketing goes we said it to preface this video. This is a movie we'll both see regardless of whatever they put out in the trailer. So maybe this isn't an attempt to market to us cuz they know they've got us. Uh maybe it's it's they're looking at it going like we're just going to show that we we're we're putting a woman first for the first time and kind of focus on that. I mean, they have and I really like this. They have a part with the the script writing for the trailer where it it says the word her and then the other la- uh, letters fade in to say a, a hero. Yeah. You know, so I I wonder if they're just they're going we're going full in not as much on the plot details or if this is going to be different than Doctor Strange or another movie, but going we're finally doing a female character. Please come see it. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. And I mean, I guess at this point too, I don't know how many more people you're going to get to see a Marvel movie. Um, I, at this point, I mean, what we're 20 films in, I feel like you've probably pretty much got everybody committed. Who's going to be at this point. Well, you know, you say that, but in the U.S., Black Panther drew more money than Avengers Infinity War. Now, worldwide, Infinity War did better, but in the U.S., Black Panther outgrossed it. And I think that's because they appealed to a market they might not necessarily have been tapping in, and I think they see that same potential with Captain Marvel, and I think they saw DC actually pull it off well with Wonder Woman. So I think they finally... And, and I'll be honest to say that, you know, this movie, in my opinion, got fast-forwarded because Wonder Woman is what it is. I think this is a real a, a real big attempt to to draw, to try and tap into a couple of the markets they've been neglecting for way too long. So hopefully it it works out and it's a good representation. Oh yeah, no, I'm yeah. I mean, I'm I'm all on board. Um, Captain Marvel. It's not. I haven't read much of her title specifically, but through reading Avengers over the years, I, I know a good amount about the character, and so I'm you know, I'm stoked. I'm. I think it's terrific that they're diversifying their leads in the movies. And I really hope that if and when they kill off Captain America and Iron Man, um, which I have a feeling is going to happen in some form or another, then she really 
winds up being the leader of the next stage. I think that that would be really great, um, not only from a thematic and, and story um, point of view, but just from a representation. I, you know, it it it's weird, um, but you know, I'm a a straight white four year old male, and I'm sick of seeing me represented on the screen. I want, to, I I know what it's like to be a straight forty year old male. I want to experience it from other people's perspectives, and you know, an all female Avengers team with maybe just Black Panther would be phenomenal. You know, so I I hope that that's where this is going. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's let's call that a segue because he brought up what a new Avengers team could possibly look like. And the other trailer we got this week was the trailer for Avengers Endgame. What did you think first off of the name Endgame? Does that mean anything to you? Were you someone who put a lot of thought into what they were going to call it? No, I, I didn't care an ounce what they named this thing. Um, and I don't think people really cared other than they wanted it in advance to use it as uh, you know, a clue to try to figure out ahead of time what's happening. So, I mean, I don't give a shit. Do you care? I I don't care at all. I wasn't someone who was like, Oh, I I have to know what the name of it is going to be. I will say that I went and watched infinity war again to yesterday after the, the trailer had come out and I didn't remember when they, I saw the trailer the first time that Dr. Strange has said right before he turned into Ash, we're in the end game now. So I did kind of like that connectivity to the other movie. Um, I'm to my knowledge, that's not a, an Avengers storyline of any significance that I'd heard of before, like age of Ultron, like infinity war. Uh, but it, it seems fitting. I kind of like that. We're hopefully wrapping up kind of the major arcs of these characters and moving into some of the other ones. Do you, what do you what do you think? Like this trailer doesn't have a lot to it, to be honest. Like there isn't, you know, like we don't have to break down scene for scene what happens because there isn't much. But mm-hmm. where do you think this movie's going? Um. Oh. Okay. Well, where do I think this movie's going? You mean as in predict what's going to happen? Yeah. Or... Based off based off what you saw or just what yeah. what you think? Okay. Well, so first off, from what I saw, this. To me, now, and again, with the qualifier that this is a movie I'm going to see opening weekend and I'm insanely excited for, and I'm sure it's going to be great. This was an even more disappointing trailer than the last one. This, to me, was a, we can throw up pretty much anything we want, call it a trailer, and you're going to watch it 15.7 million times on YouTube. I mean, other than the soliloquy at the beginning, it's just a bunch of shots of people looking sad. And, oh. then it ends, and then it ends with Ant-Man making jokes, which, you know, I love me some Paul Rudd. So so that's great. But Well, I, I totally disagree. This is exactly what I like out of a first trailer because I don't want too much. And I thought for me, this just kind of set the, the sadness and the mood of it without really giving me much storyline and much of a, a spoiler of some of the surprises they're going to have. I mean, the only real reveal we have was that Hawkeye is going to be Ronan which I kind of dug, but it's just kind of a small taste tone setter because I don't want most of the movie put through the trailer. I just basically wanted to be reintroduced into this world and and given some little bits. We're going to get at least two more trailers that are going to show us a lot more. So I think this is a great way to start it out. Um, My biggest complaints about the trailer, and they aren't really complaints, just kind of made me chuckle, is that first off, the you, you make it kind of feel like, oh, we've lost all these these people, they're all dead. And our two new hopes are going to be in Hawkeye and Ant-Man, who are like the two least powerful people they they could have possibly had. And I also thought the the kind of, you know, they, they show the title sequence and all those things, and then they they want to leave you with something good, and it's just Paul Rudd making the same Paul Rudd jokes. I was like, I mean, it's fine. But, like, <laughs> that wasn't really, like, the high note. Like, I think back to, like, Avengers... Age of Ultron, like the the end shot they had on theirs was kind of like you just saw Vision's eyes. Just mm-hmm. enough to tell you, hey, Vision's in this movie. It's going to be awesome. Uh, seeing Paul Rudd want to be busted in a door didn't quite give me that feel, yeah. but um, I, I liked the mood of it. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it's, you know, okay, I get the mood and I even get it. You know, you kind of set that mood up with him, with Tony Stark's soliloquy in the spaceship. And, and okay, I get it. You reintroduce it, but maybe give me something a little more than that. Um, I, 
I see. I'm probably am completely different from you in that I am a person who is absolutely comfortable with spoilers. Um, in fact, a lot of times I will intentionally spoil things for myself. Bef- like before I go see movies or before I read books, just because I want to make sure that I'm watching what I'm watching and not trying to anticipate what I'm going to watch. Okay. Um, cause, cause that's a bad habit I have of sitting down and watching and then trying to guess what's going to happen next. And as a result, missing a lot of what I see. So, um, you know, like all of the star Wars movies, I read the complete plot synopsis before I went and saw those. So <laughs> really? I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I think um, I don't recall if I did before Avengers Infinity War. I might have. Um, but yeah, no, I, I quite often will will go ahead and read the stuff beforehand. And for me, that works. Right? Hmm. That that improves my enjoyment, um, and the experience. So I want more from a trailer. And this just had nothing. Um, also, kind of get back to your original question about where it's going to go. Um, I'm also a little concerned about it because the way it appears that they're setting it up is, okay, now we're introducing Ronan, and now we're introducing Ant-Man, and these might be the wild cards that finally turn it around, right? Well, except they're kind of hinting already that Captain Marvel is going to be the one to turn it around. She's not even in the trailer. And... I, I sort of have a feeling too, like those are just fakes and it's really going to come down to Captain America and Iron Man again. And, you know, you know, Jeremy Renner is going to be there and not really do anything for a third movie. Paul Rudd, I mean, Paul Rudd's there for, you know, comic relief. So he'll do Oh, I, I can tell you exactly why, why Paul Rudd is there. Uh, did you see Ant-Man and the Wasp? Yes, I did. Okay, so you know the the end credit scene there. He's it's that same van that he has parked out that he gets sucked into the quantum realm, and right before he gets sucked into the quantum realm, Michelle Pfeiffer is like, "Watch out for getting stuck in time vortexes, etc., mm-hmm. etc." So Paul Rudd is going to be the catalyst for how they. I'm I'm assuming in a spoiler, if you don't want to know anything, they're going to go back in time at some point, yeah. um, and right. he he's the, Paul Rudd's the the way they end up accomplishing that, and I think. I, I think you're right that obviously they teased us Captain Marvel. Um, I don't think they're going to give us any Captain Marvel in this movie until Captain Marvel's movie has come out. So I think she'll yeah. be in it. They'll they'll tease her in a trailer, maybe Vision-esque, as I talked about earlier. But that'll be after March, after her movie comes out, because they want her to be more established, you know, and let us know her own story before they, they throw her in there. Um, I am hopeful, because this was talked about by the Russo brothers, that some of the characters that got a lot of screen time in infinity war won't get as much screen time in this one. And it'll kind of be a, you know, so like captain America, I mean, one of my biggest complaints and it's a minor complaint. Cause I love infinity war is that he doesn't show up until like 50 minutes into the movie and he's really not in it that much. So I think this is going to be his movie where the first movie was more iron man and Thor's movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm, I'm kind of hopeful that Tony Stark will be in space for almost the majority of the movie and won't kind of show up to help them until the, the end. Cause it, you know, we, it, it doesn't say how long he's been in space in that teaser before he's running out of food and oxygen. So right. I'm hoping he's been in space for, you know, a year or two or whatever. And that he's kind of in the, the background because he's, to be honest, a character I'm kind of tired of. So I would much rather watch Captain America run the show and have this be a lot more of his movie taking things forward. Yeah, and I, and I can say that too. But it's, and yeah, I totally agree with you about how they're going to use Ant Man as the catalyst. But it could just be that he shows up at the front door and they say, "Oh, you've got these weird tachyon beams, you know, coming off you like radiation." You know, they collect a, a sample of it and then they use that. So while he's technically the catalyst, he's not really doing anything other than just being there to provide the vehicle for the, the yeah. hero, you know, for the main characters to do it. Um, I, you know, as far as um, Hawkeye go or Ronan goes, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. I think that they've so badly used that character up to this point that I don't know how they could really redeem it. I don't think they're interested in it, to be honest. I think yeah. I think redeeming him is giving him a new costume and being like, hey, look, we brought him along this time. Um, his, his moment that he got in this whole series, which Josh Whedon fought for, was him having a, a family in a barn. 
and right. I, I don't need much more from him. We're not going to get the Matt Fratton arc that we would all want in a Marvel TV show. So I'm kind of willing to let him just be the background guy who will do some, you know, I'm sure at one point he'll jump off of something, turn around and fire an arrow and we'll, we'll all get excited for that and forget he's there. Right. But at, at this point, I'd rather he just not be there and then use that, that real estate to set up another character who could be interesting going forward. Is there, um, is there anyone you think will be introduced hero wise that we have not yet seen or heard of? Um, Hmm. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to say no, they're not going to do it. But if they did, I would put just about any amount of money on um, them teasing without giving her formal name, Miss Marvel, the Kamala Khan. Um, oh, okay. Hero, because I bet you that they are sitting over there um, the executives, and if Captain Marvel does, you know, two thirds of Black Panther, then they're going to pounce on Miss Marvel as a character for the next phase, because that's um, another kind of market that they can tap into, and another divert, you know, different character from what they already have um, that they could take in interesting directions. So. Well, what about you? You think they're going to have someone? Um, I think there's a possibility that Adam Warlock was teased in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 end credit scene. So I think there's a possibility there. And part of the reason I think that is because James Gunn said that Adam Warlock wasn't going to be in his script for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Now, we have no idea what's going on with that movie in general. But I think there's a chance that that Adam Warlock could be built into this. But what I actually think, and this maybe this is a bit of a cheat answer because I don't think it'll have anything to do with the actual movie or plot. But I think the end credit scene is going to be X Men related. That would be my my guess. Yeah. Oh well, that also that or that could tee up the Fantastic Four too. Yeah, or Silver Surfer, and you know, and any yeah. of those. So do you, uh, do you think any Avengers are going to permanently die? Cause I'm, I'm assuming that they're going to correct everything to the point where, you know, even Loki and Heimdall and every, everyone comes back to life. Obviously Spider-Man, Black Panther, Dr. Strange are all coming back, but I think they're going to correct it to the, the point that everyone that died in infinity war, Gamora, they all come back. So is there anyone that is going to permanently, well, permanently in quotation marks die? Well, I think Vegas has to be giving at least even odds to Captain America um, just because of, you know, Chris Evans having been fairly outspoken, um, you know, obviously not outright saying it because he doesn't want to violate his contract and give anything away, but pretty much all but confirming that he's done um, in the role. And I think uh, a combination of, you know, him being you know, him being done and moving on and so not being available anymore and also trading everybody else for him gives a kind of a emotional resonance to the end that they're going to go for and that that ultimately he's the sacrifice um you know because there's a couple times um in previous movies where you know that he'll say things like we don't trade lives you know, when they're discussing, well, sure. do we give somebody over the villains, right? Right. I mean, he's always, it, it, it's a huge part of the Captain America character that, you know, he's the first one to storm the beach. He makes sure that if anybody's going to, you know, be first in line of fire, it's him. And so I think that that is in keeping with the character. I think it deals with Chris Evans not being in the role anymore. And it's going to give that kind of emotional half that they're going to need at the end while having everybody else survive. Um, so and I also think then that that sets up Sebastian Stan to, as Bucky to be the new captain America, which is what they've done in the comics and, and worked pretty well. And so they can keep that franchise going forward with him. Um, or even, you know, if they're really feeling ballsy with Anthony Mackie taking it over um, instead of being Falcon. But um, that, that's my prediction, you know, well, for, first off, I hate the idea of them just passing the mantles or, around in this instance. Like, if you want to make an Anthony Mackie 
movie, just make an Anthony Mackie movie as the Falcon, or make a Sebastian Stan Winter Soldier movie, or make a buddy movie between the two of them. Um, if you're going to kill Captain America, just be done with Captain America then. You don't have to shoehorn someone else in there. You have more than enough characters, especially now that you're going to have X-Men and Fantastic Four joining the fray at some point here. I think thematically, and from a storytelling standpoint, it needs to be Iron Man who's the one that makes that sacrifice. Um, over the course of the movies, he's basically responsible for every bad decision the Avengers make, right? He's the the one that sets off Civil War. He's the one that makes Ultron. He's the one that makes a lot of these bad decisions. And something they set up in an Infinity War was him wanting to be a dad, him wanting to, you know, take that on. And Spider-Man's kind of a surrogate son, and he basically gets Spider-Man. He gets Spider-Man killed, and Spider-Man dies in his arms. So I think me, from a storytelling standpoint, him being the one to make that sacrifice would be the one that would make the most sense to me. I also think they would want to give Robert Downey Jr., whose contract I believe is also up, the kind of, you know, farewell, you know, thanks for everything, you're the one who started it type ending, Um, which is why I think that's how it's going to go down. And I think some of this Chris Evans saying goodbye to the role type thing is an intentional misdirect from all of them to make us think it's going to be Captain America. See, and I disagree with that because I think for all of the reasons you said, they've set up a way to shunt off Iron Man after this. He wants to be a father. He wants to settle down with Pepper. And so you can essentially move him out and say, okay, he's moved on from this. You still have him in reserve. So if for whatever reason, you know, in 10 years now you wanted to use old man Stark because, you know, say Michael Douglas has died and so you can't use Hank Pym anymore for, you know, whatever MacGuffin, you know, deus ex machina you need, he's still in their back pocket. Whereas Captain America, uh, you know, they're playing up the, the man out of time. Peggy dies, so he lost, you know, his love. And, you know, the, you know, the little flirty kind of thing with Sharon Carter doesn't really, haven't gone anywhere. It's kind of so, gross, to be honest. Hmm? It's kind of gross, to be honest. A little bit, yeah. So, you know, he, there isn't a way to move him out of the picture because it's pretty clear he doesn't have anything else. He doesn't have anywhere to go after this is done. He's just going to keep being Captain America until he finally keels over. So, I, I'm, that's why I think he is a better pick. I mean, I do agree that thematically, it would be a strong way to have Stark go out, but I think there's also is a is it thematically to have him start it and to have him be in the final shot, riding off into the sunset with his wife and his kid, and you know him almost formally. Even God, now that I'm saying it, I can see the actual scene. You know him handing over the keys to the Avengers base to Captain Marvel or somebody, and getting in the car and driving off. Um, I mean, God, I hope it's not something that cheesy. He doesn't what? deserve to win. He's a terrible guy and everyone else saves him and he never has to he never he never has to bear the responsibility for anything. So I I I want him to die. Captain America can go live in the 40s because we're going to have time travel anyway. He can beat Thanos and just decide he's going to go live with Peggy um and die of natural causes and damn it, I don't want Tony Stark to win. Thanks for listening to Kids Seriously. If you didn't completely hate us, feel free to hit like, subscribe, or tell a friend about the show. If you want to write to us and tell us how much we suck, or just ask a question, you can reach us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, hit us up on Twitter at kidsseriously. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.